People from the Museum of Natural History knew that at one point in time, Great Gull Island was the site of a major tern colony, but the terns were in decline. When I came to the museum, a lady in education called me one day and asked me if I'd like to go to Gull Island. And I thought it looked like a terrific place to try and increase the numbers of terns. would mean we'd need a team to, to work. Well, you got a load here now, we can some work on, huh? <laughs> we have a lot of people, you're right. There's two species of terns that nest on this island. Common terns, and then also Lozia terns, which are federally listed as endangered. We got quite a few people interested, and once we had enough, we could stay on the island all summer. And so by 69, we had enough people to do that, and that's when we started it the way we do it now. I knew it was going to be more than one summer. I didn't think it would be 50 summers. <laughs> that, that's a surprise. She's been here year after year after year, from end of April to September, every single summer. She's like the backbone of Gull Island, and Helen will draw you back into Gull Island again and again. I love the water and swimming and the clear sky at night, and I love the primitive living. It fit in perfectly with my uh, schedule as a school bus driver. First I came for the birds, but it, the people, the people you meet out here are really, really what makes it special. It's a collective effort of people from every different background you could ever imagine working towards a specific goal to benefit turns. I'm a general surgeon, always interested in science and, and always been a birder. Great Gulls is kind of a touchstone for me, and uh, I pretty much come back every year. And one of the wonderful things is over the years, Great Gulls has become an institution, and it's almost like a laboratory now. What she's done is she's spawned a whole new generation of scientists. People from all over the world have come here. We try to get here between the middle and the end of April each year because the turns come in at the very end of April. And we like to be here when they come in. And by June 10th, the first chick probably hatches. And at that point, well, that gets quite strenuous. Hunting for their nests is challenging, but it's also very fun. Well, I found a new nest under here, too. <laughs> you really feel you've accomplished something. We're banning the chicks and trapping adults to see what birds are coming back to the same nest. When you're working with a species like the terns, you, you have to study them for many years. Gull Island has been doing it for uh, decades now, and so we get a much uh, broader view how they are doing and how they adapt to be successful. You can just see the grit that it's taken you know, over the 50 years of the project to produce yep. wow. a place like Great Gull is today and the size of the colony that it is today. You know, that was a force of will, really, of one woman. You know, Gull Island is the story of nature coming back, of nature rebounding, and of people making nature come back. The idea that you can take some place that was, you know, a 17-acre piece of land that was completely paved over, and you can put nature back taking an endangered or threatened species from no birds or almost no birds to a few thousand birds to 20 or 30,000 birds. We're going trapping in the morning. Ding dong, the sun is going to shine. So, get out of bed, get off the ledge, get over to the shop on time. Got your bags, notebooks, pair of cards. Helen is the best mentor ever. Everything, okay. She has such enthusiasm and the belief that you can just 
go and do something if you set your mind to it. Gull Island is a treasure and it's a gift that Helen has given us and I think that's what a lot of people that come back year after year see is that Helen has given this to us. Mm -hmm.